Well, we've got some new developments in the all Democrat, no Republic, one independent, apparently pretty race obsessed LA City Council. But first, be sure to hit that like button if you like us. If you don't like us, don't hit it. Although if you didn't like us, you wouldn't be watching. So I don't really have any fear. Hit subscribe and make sure you click on the description below to get on our mailing list because believe it or not, we've been demonetized by YouTube. I don't know why. Maybe it's because we've done some videos on the response to the coronavirus. Maybe it's because we've done some videos uh, suggesting our skepticism about what happened to Donald Trump in 2020 during the presidential election. Maybe it's because we've checked the Democrats on their hypocrisy regarding 2016, because as you well know, Hillary has been running around for six years claiming that her election was stolen and referring to Donald Trump illegitimate. I don't know why, but make sure you click the description below. That way we let you know whenever we post a brand new video. And as I said, we've been demonetized. So it would be helpful if you really feel strongly about the show, and I know you do, and some of you out there are multi-millionaires, if not billionaires, be as in bodacious, we got your back too, throw a little something in the tip jar. Now, for the first half hour of our show, you'll be able to watch gratis. Won't cost you anything. But as you can see, we'll just be getting into a groove at the end of that half hour, and you don't want to miss the rest of the show. So become a subscriber, or if you already are, you'll be able to continue watching the show on EpicTV.com. Over at MSNB Hee Haw, that I watch so you don't have to, if you are a white man, heterosexual, Christian, Republican, I wouldn't advise watching it. As Tucker Carlson tries to warn us. Is there anything worse than white people? They're violent, they're heartless. They're cruel, they're deranged, they're secretive, they're dishonest. In fact, as you just heard Tiffany Cross say, white people are a mortal danger to you and your loved ones. They threaten your life. Are they poisoning the wells? Are they baking bread with the blood of your children? If not, according to Tiffany Cross and MSNBC, they're fully capable of doing those things. They've certainly done worse. This is Hutu Radio. But it's not an independent radio station in an African country. It's part of one of the biggest news organizations in the world, part of the biggest telecommunications company in the United States, Comcast, which owns it. So you have to ask yourself, what does Comcast board think of this? Comcast board is mostly white people, white people who, according to the channel they own, decided they wanted something, then they annexed it. White people who steal because they're white, white people who could, quote, turn to violence when they don't get their way. White people are going crazy, endangering their communities. So you have to ask yourself, why are they putting this on the air? Why are they allowing this? This is not a policy debate. These are open attacks on people, on Americans, on the basis purely of their race. I'll tell you why they do it, Tucker. Someone said, and it wasn't Einstein because we checked, compound interest is the greatest force in the universe. Whoever said compound interest is the greatest force in the universe never encountered white guilt. It is a force to behold. Second reason, in order for the Democratic Party to survive, they have to convince, quote, people of color, particularly black people, that they are victims, that they are being persecuted. And for every victim, you've got to have a victimizer. Who is that other than white people, particularly white men? And in order to make sure that the Democratic Party continues to get the lion's share of the black vote, because think about it, they've destroyed the nuclear intact family. We've talked about that a million times. Because of the so-called war on poverty that was launched in the mid-60s, and since then we've spent over $20 trillion on poverty. And poverty has flatlined. Before the war on poverty, the poverty line was trending down. And then a few years after the war on poverty, the, po the poverty line began to flatline and it's been about 15% for decades. Almost twice that, however, among blacks. It used to be rare for a black child to enter the world without a father married to the mother, but because of the war on poverty, we have incentivized women to marry the government and incentivize men to abandon their financial and moral responsibility. And then you look at public education, urban schools. Let's just take one city, Baltimore. 
There are 13 public high schools in Baltimore, urban high schools, where 0% of the kids are math proficient. And there's another half a dozen where only 1% is math proficient. That's half of the public high schools in the city of Baltimore. And then there's crime. You have these soft on crime DAs, like the DA in Philadelphia, who got put there with the backing of George Soros back money. And Philadelphia is setting records for homicide. And homicide is disproportionately committed by black people against other black people. And you have these soft on crime policies. You have these Democrats running around talking about defund the police, like Cori Bush in St. Louis, who has spent $300,000 on her own personal security as she's still demanding that we defund the police. She happens to be black. So what has the Democratic Party done for black people? Education, lousy, crime, up. People graduate from high schools where they can neither read nor write at grade proficiency even though they have a diploma. And the nuclear intact family has been under attack. And when you're talking about the economy and inflation, of course, inflation will disproportionately hurt people uh, who have less money, and a disproportionately high percentage of those are going to be the very black people that people on the left claim they care about. So they don't have a record. So what they do have, however, is the ability to scare people. And MSNB Hee by the way, 25% uh, of their viewership is black. And Many black people love, love, love watching MSNB Hee Haw, watching people like Joy Reid attack white people day after day after day, calling them a direct threat, calling them a menace to the nation. When in fact, a young black male is anywhere from eight to 10 times, depending upon the age category, eight to 10 times more likely than a young white male to be murdered. And almost always the murderer of that young black male is another young black person. So if you want to talk about who's menacing society, a disproportionately high percentage of young black men are in fact menacing other black people. If you look at black white homicides, and they generally aren't very many of them, most homicide is same race crime. Most white people are killed by other white people, most black people are killed by black people. But any given year, there's roughly 750 interracial black-white homicides. 500 whites are killed by blacks. 250 blacks are killed by whites. So it's a lie that white men are menacing black people. The menace to black people are, are other young black men, and most of them enter the world without a father married to the mother. And forget about elder one more time. Barack Obama once said a kid raised without a father is five times more likely to be poor and commit crime, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. I have in my baby brown libertarian fingers a couple of slippers. These are my slippers made by my pillow. How can I get a pair, you ask? Happy you ask. Go to MyPillow.com, promo code ELDER, or call the number on the screen and tell them the great Eldersky sent you. Now, these come in different colors and different styles. As you can see, this is a beautiful tan, and the interior, soft and luxuriant. I also have with me today, I don't, I don't normally carry one. Oh, wait a minute, here it is. It's a MyPillow, MyPillow, an actual MyPillow, MyPillow. But this is my pillow, not your pillow. So if you want a my pillow for yourself to make it your pillow, then you need to call my pillow, the number on the screen, or go to the website mypillow.com, promo code elder. By the way, they've got over 100 products, one of which is the my pillow Giza Dream bed sheet. See how smooth that transition was? That's why I get paid the big bucks. My pillow Giza Dream sheets. And this is the finest cotton in the world. Mike Lindell scoured the world to find the best cotton in the world. It's somewhere in, in Egypt. And these come, of course, in different colors and different sizes, depending upon the size of your bed. So, MyPillow.com, promo code ELDER, or call the number on your screen. I'll be right back. Emerson Bihiha has given a job to Reverend Al Sharpton. Sharpton has a show every weekend. He used to have a show 
daily. And the ratings were so bad, they kicked him to the weekend, but he's still there. This is a guy who became famous by lying about a woman named Tawana Brawley. Some of you young people aren't aware of this. You, you can Google this or you can go on YouTube and see the news reports. A young teenager didn't come home from school. And when she came home, she told her parents that she had been raped and assaulted by a white man. Turns out she was lying. Turns out Al Sharpton knew well into the story that she was lying, but Al Sharpton still kept pushing this issue. And he even named the man who did it, a guy named, um, he was a, a assistant district attorney, and Al Sharpton named him by name and claimed that he, in fact, had raped Tawana Brawley. And when the guy said, I didn't do it, Al Sharpton said, well, if you don't think you did it, then sue me, sue me for defamation. So the guy did. And a multiracial jury found Al Sharpton and two co-defendants liable for death defaming this man. This man was getting death threats. His daughter was being taunted as she went to and from school. Uh, his marriage crumbled, all because of what Al Sharpton did. That's how Al Sharpton got famous. Then there's a 1991 Crown Heights riots that one Jewish leader in New York called the most serious pogrom in the history of this country. And Al Sharpton is on tape saying, if the Jews want to get it on, tell them to pin their yarmulkes on their heads and come over to my house. Uh, then there's Freddie's Fashion Mart. There was a, a dispute between a, a, a Jewish tenant and a black subtenant. The building was owned, by the way, by a black church. And Al Sharpton got involved and made it a anti-Jewish, anti-black thing. And some man, deranged man, inspired by Al Sharpton rhetoric, went into Freddie's Fashion Mart, shot up a bunch of people, set the building on fire, and shot himself. And Al Sharpton was fanning the flames. And then, of course, there's Ferguson. Well, Al Sharpton went into the streets of Ferguson yelling, no justice, no peace. And, of course, the officer was completely exonerated. The Duke lacrosse hoax. Al Sharpton was there fanning the flames of that as well. And do you know that Al Sharpton is on an FBI surveillance tape agreeing to sell to an undercover FBI, FBI narc crack cocaine? I kid you not. And this man has a television show on MSNBC, and he's referred to by the media as a Democrat kingmaker. And virtually all the Democrats who were running for president in 2020 went to Al Sharpton to try to get his endorsement. Everywhere from Joe Biden uh, to Elizabeth Warren uh, to Beto O'Rourke uh, to um, uh, Mayor Pete, they all went to New York and kissed his ring. Despite the things that he has said in the past, he's also said uh, homophobic comments as well. So this is a guy who became famous by falsely accusing a white man named Stephen Pagonis. I just remembered his name, Stephen Pagonis, of raping a woman. To this day, Al Sharpton has never apologized. And he's never really apologized for his role uh, in the Crown Heights riots. He's never really apologized for his role in Freddie's Fashion Mart. He's never apologized for being in the streets of Ferguson yelling, no justice, no peace. And the reason that's relevant is because this man says, I came out of the King movement, meaning MLK. Was Martin Luther King in the streets yelling, no justice, no peace? Or did he believe in civil disobedience? Saying no justice, no peace is the very antithesis of civil disobedience. But there is MSNBC Haw and Al Sharpton has a show, and he's surrounded by people like Tiffany Cross and Joy Reid, uh, who are race baiting, anti-white race hustlers. You tell me why. Speaking of our friends in the media, the threat most widely feared, not white people, according to this recent poll, 71% believe American democracy is currently under threat, and a large percentage of them say the threat is the media. 67% view Trump as a threat. 60% believe that Biden is a threat. But a great deal of them believe the media. 84% of voters view the media as a threat to democracy. That's amazing. 95% of Republicans say that. 83% of independents say that, and 70% of Democrats are calling the media a threat. Now, among Democrats, 
only 38% of them call it a major threat compared to 80% of the Republicans and 53% of independents. So the people that are watching MSNB Hee Haw are those who don't believe that the media is a major threat and they love the idea that people on MSNB Hee Haw are pushing this false notion of systemic racism. Never mind how it's hurting the country. And in my movie, Uncle Tom 2, which you can see on UncleTom.com, I talk about how communists, Marxists, collectivists, socialists, those who want to redistribute income, have used the civil rights movement because they know that race relations is the raw nerve of America. We have a guy in the film who's a KGB defector who says the Soviet Union intentionally infiltrated the civil rights movement in order to bring down America from within because they knew that America was militarily and financially way too strong to be brought down from outside. It has to be brought down from within. And this is exactly, in my opinion, what these useful idiots over on MSNB Hee Haw are doing to America. Hope you enjoyed that video. The full show is available to watch right now on Epoch TV. Just click the link in the description below to learn more because we've got a country to save.